Hello, my name is Marcia Spink and I'm the Associate Director for Policy and Science in the Air Protection Division of EPA Region 3. This is Clean Air Act 101, Module 6, about Title 6 on stratospheric ozone. This is being brought to you by the Office of Air Quality Planning and Standards. Now, Title VI of the 1990 Clean Air Amendments built on the market-based structure and requirements that were already in EPA regulations to phase out the production of substances that deplete the ozone layer. The 1990 amendments required a complete phase-out of chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs, and halons with interim reductions and some related changes to the existing Montreal Protocol. Under these provisions, EPA had to list all regulated substances with their ozone depletion potential, chlorine bromide loadings, atmospheric lifetimes, and global warming potentials within 60 days of enactment of the 1990 amendments. EPA was required to add to the list at least every three years for substances meeting specified criteria. Phase-out dates similar to the Montreal Protocol for Class I chemicals, which was 2000 for CFC halons, carbon tetrachloride, and 2002 for methyl chloroform. Class II chemical substances had to be phased out by 2030, and regulations for Class I substances were required within 10 months of enactment. Class II substances had to be regulated by December 31, 1999. Substitutes. The 1990 amendments also required EPA to publish a list of unsafe substitutes for Phase I and Phase II chemicals and to ban the use of unsafe substitutes. Safe alternatives require prior notice of sale of new and existing chemicals for significant new use of substitutes. Banned products. The 1990 amendments required that all non-essential products releasing Class I chemicals be banned by 1992. In 1994, a ban went into effect for aerosols and non-insulating foams using Class II chemicals with exceptions for flammability and safety. Regulations for this purpose were required to be promulgated by 1991 with an effective date no later than 1993. There are some other provisions of Title VI. Let's talk about exchanges. It requires a net environmental benefit for trades of allowances to produce controlled substances. It restricted the use and emissions to lowest achievable emission rate. It requires maximum recycling and safe disposal for CFC refrigerants by 1992. All other class one and class two substances by 1994, it became illegal to vent class one or two refrigerants after July 1992, and a prohibition went into place on venting any environmentally harmful substitute refrigerant after five years. Additional provisions of Title VI include provisions for mobile air conditioners, mandatory recycling after January 1992, certification of equipment and personnel that handle these air conditioners, and a ban on small containers except for certified personnel. Non-essential products. They banned non-essential products that result in releases of Class I substances by 1992, and beginning in 1994, banned the use of Class II substances in aerosols and non-insulating foams with exemptions for flammability and safety. Other provisions of Title VI include labeling requirements, mandatory warning labels on all containers of products made with Class I or Class II substances, depending in some cases upon availability of safe alternative. There are requirements applicable to containers of Class I and Class II substances and to products containing Class I substances required within 18 months after enactment, effective 30 months later, and all products must be labeled by 2015. For procurement, all required federal agencies are to amend their procurement regulations to maximize the use of safe alternatives for Class I and Class II substances. And with regard to methane, EPA was required to publish five reports to Congress by 1992 and one follow-up report by 1994. This is the end of Module 6 of Clean Air Act 101 on stratospheric ozone.